slap out, bang out party for the neighborhood. And they would do it. And every day, Job would get up and he would make a sacrifice for his children before God. And he would intercede as a parent for his kids. And the Bible says, and thus did Job continually. Right after that, the guy who prayed, the guy who God said was the most righteous on the face of the earth, in verses 17 through 19 of chapter 1 of the book of Job, the Bible says that a servant came running in front of Job and said, yesterday, while your children were feasting, a wind came from the east and the house and knocked down the house and it collapsed and all of the children are dead and I, only I am left to tell you. You see, calamity happens. The Bible says that right after that, that there were people that came in and stole the sheep, stole his donkey, 7,000 sheep, 500 donkeys. They were just, he was, he was the richest man and he was a righteous man and life wasn't working out. Things become tough. But what happened was, was that Job hung in there and the Bible says at the end, and that's why I mentioned to you about the end, Look for the end where people are at. You know where they are. A tree, a tree, a tree. That which is from the beginning is known by what it produces in the end. And so at the end, the Bible says that God gave Job twice as much as he had. He had 14,000 sheep, so many thousand cattle, had a thousand donkeys. And the Bible said that God gave him back seven sons and three daughters. But why is it that God only gave him seven sons and three daughters? When the Bible says that God gave him double of everything else. But he only gave him seven sons and three daughters. Because God was showing him that the prayers and the intercession that he had for the first seven sons and three daughters worked. And those seven sons and three daughters were in heaven with God. So there were double the amount that he had in the beginning. You understand? No, I got a story to tell. So, you know, some of, you, some of you think and you ask the question of, okay, no, tell us your real secret, Dr. T. Like, really, what do you, you, you do to make sure God uses you so much? When we're on the road, without fail, you walk into his hotel room, there's going to be three things on the desk. A computer, a Bible, and those three-by-five cards. And he's done that for 30-odd years. Just the same verses on the cards. And sometimes without fail, there's four. The peanuts are probably on your desk all the time too. Trail mix. But anyways, <laughs> and you go into his, you go into his house. Without fail, you're going to see a this computer. Water. You're going to see a, a Bible and you're going to see those three by five cards. But not only that is sometimes he'll go down when he has a day off or something on the road to the pool. And this is kind of unique because people have no clue probably what he's doing. And he has his iPod in, in his ears. And he's going back and forth just with his feet in the pool with these confession cards. Just back and forth. Just back and forth. Just doing the very thing that he's probably done when he was in his 20s. And it's just a huge testimony to me is it's just the fundamentals that has continued to seemingly change his life. And I think we wonder, no, there must be more. There must be something else you do that we just don't know of that really makes you to be the man of God that you are. But those three by five cards, I just want to make sure you all catch that because he's still does it today every day you, you so. know there's a there's something that is is important is that in in the area the spiritual arena of your life you need to go from desire to discipline and what will happen will be is that you'll go from discipline to delight that's good those three d's you go from desire to discipline and discipline to delight. It will begin to take on a life of its own. You won't want to do anything else. You won't want to know anybody else but God. You, you're not even interested in what people think anymore. You know they're lying. You, you just know that it's not what men say. It's what God says. It's interesting. You know what they're talking about right now? They're talking about forgiving all student loans. Some of you students would really like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> They're talking about forgiving all student loans. And you know what? They're also talking about forgiving people's mortgages. Do you know what, do you know what they're beginning to do? They, I mean, they don't even know it, but you know what they're beginning to do? 
they're beginning to create a year of jubilee. Oh, People being set free. And they don't even know what they're doing. They're not doing it the right way. They're doing it for the wrong reason because they think that they're not going to make any money unless they get people money enough to spend it. But in your life, you go from desire. When you're younger, you get desire. Man, I want to know God. I want to know God. Then you get into your disciplines. Don't miss church. Stupid move. What are you going to do anyway? You can see people walking down the street all the time. You know, when they're, when they're 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, it, you know, that looks like, man, they've got everything in the world to do, man, which is, man, I got, all my, I got all my homies, I got everything I need. I got my friends, you know, man, I got a million friends. They don't have, really have any. But, you know, they got all my friends. Facebook. They, yeah, they... <laughs> Twitter. I, I have been looking at this stuff. This is amazing. You checked it out. This is... I'm sitting there and I'm going, oh, yeah, man. Just had some Chinese food. It's a little hot. Got gas. Here's the quote he actually used. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, who would take the time <laughs> to do this? That proves people can go to church. <laughs> it's proof. If you got all this time to put all this stuff on there, man, I'm telling you, you can go to church. You really Now can. you can do it during church. <laughs> and now, yeah, now you can do it during church as long as... Because I don't catch you doing anything that's sinful. Yes. If I do, man, I, I will bring you up in front of everybody. Step on your phone. I'll just tell you, I'll just throw your phone right in the baptistry. <laughs> your, your, phone needs to, your phone needs to get baptized. Yes. Doctor, we got one more? One more. Sure. All right, one more. Or maybe two, three, four more. What would you suggest I do on a daily basis besides just spending time in the Word so that I can ensure that I'm not wasting my life? Uh, let me give you two things. Number one, when I left home tonight, the book of Proverbs was playing in my, in my room. It needs to speak to you. God's word needs to speak to your family all the time. Gentlemen, you want your wife hearing the scriptures. You know, don't, don't think, you know, she's probably really nice and that's what her mom and dad gave her. But let me help you. Someday, there's going to be a challenge. That's why you need to get her in the scriptures. Her relationship with God is what you want. You don't want her to just be nobody. You want her to have a very vibrant relationship with the Lord. And then secondly, I would encourage you to network with people who are where you want to go. Stop spending your time with people who cannot take you somewhere. Don't do it. You may want to do that right now, and you may want to, you know, just, oh, man, these are just my friends, and these are just really great, and this is what I want to do with my life. Yeah, but let me help you. You're going to sooner or later come to believe what I told you is the truth. And I wish someone would have told me, but no one ever did. So I want to tell you to help you understand that as you're younger, you need to take that time. Man, put it where you want it to go. Put your life in the direction you want it to go. Put it in the environment that you want to be in. Set yourself up as a student. Get mentored. Get what you need to get out of life because that's what's going to determine the end of your life. And let me help you about the memories of life. The memories of life reek with you every day forever. They don't go away. They don't go away. You don't have as much time as you think. You don't, you really, really don't. So network with people. Spend time in the word. Spend time playing the word. Just put your CDs on it at, at, at the house. Just let your CD player, you know, I mean, instead of 50 Cent, you can just put on, <laughs> instead of Kanye, I mean, you know, you can put on something else. You know, it really, you really, really can. Um, you can do that. And at first, it might be a little bit, of di a little bit difficult, but what happens is you start longing for it. You start longing for the scriptures. You start, that's what I want. That's what I want. I don't want that other stuff. You start looking at your iPod. You start looking at all the stupid stuff you got on your iPod. And you start thinking, man, I can get 40 gig back right here if I just get rid of this stuff. You know, I really, really can't. But that's where the discipline goes to the delight. Oh, yeah, man. It becomes delightful. Like I'm thinking, man, without the scriptures, man, I hope no one takes my Bible. If you take my Bible, I've already memorized it. 
Mm. I know about it.